This screencast is about how to save you money on other screencasts. Now, I'm using Camtasia, which is a popular product for creating screencasts. It has that uh, professional video workflow that's very similar to Final Cut or Premiere Pro. However, as an OSX Apple user, I do have a couple built-in tools that make things a lot cheaper for me. Uh, I'm going to use iMovie in combination with QuickTime Player. Now QuickTime Player is kind of a deceiving name because Apple has recently introduced a number of their QuickTime Pro features to this. Uh, if I drop down the file menu, you'll see that I have an option for new movie recordings, new audio recordings, new screen recordings, as well as a couple other options for advanced exports, and I'll take a look at those um, in another screencast. However, what's worth noting is that the new screen recording allows you to set a number of options for either using your built-in mic, or using another microphone, selecting the quality of the video, and then also highlighting where mouse clicks appear on the screen. So when I start that screen recording, I have the option to record the full screen with just a single click, or I could drag a specific area to the part of the screen. And I'm going to start this with just a single click the megabytes start to add up real fast. Um, this is typical of most screen recordings. However, when I go and start navigating, the impact of that really doesn't change. As I navigate PD360, for example, that rate doesn't really go up depending on what I'm doing with it. Now, if I were to be demonstrating something and I need to cut myself off, or I just want to record small segments, I can hit that stop button. And you'll see that QuickTime gives me a preview of that screen recording I just did. So I can play it back, I can determine whether it was usable, and this also gives me an opportunity to review the audio that I recorded with it as well. Now, when I go to actually move this file, I'm not going to use these share options next to the playback bar. These simply allow me to email, message, airdrop, or post directly to YouTube or Vimeo. But I've got some editing that I want to do with this particular clip. So after minimizing, what I'm going to do is go up to File, and then I'm going to go to Export to iMovie. It's going to ask me whether I want to save my iMovie into iMovie. And then it will begin an export process. Now what this export process is doing is converting my existing video and putting it into what's called an iMovie Dropbox. It's making a duplicate of this screen recording. So when I close this one, I can open Finder and in my home folder, I want to make sure that I check in movies under iMovie events, and then I'll see what's called the iMovie Dropbox. You'll see that I've got a number of different screen recordings in here already, but once I open up iMovie, I'll be prompted by iMovie as to whether or not I want to import those immediately. Depending on your footage depends on how much wait time you will have between the process of optimizing the video, generating the thumbnails, etc. You'll see that now I have that new event with all of my different screencast clips in there. I can go up to File, New Project. Just like any other project I might do, 
I can use the drag and drop functionality of iMovie to place my clips where I need them. Notice how when I select from the actual clips, I can be specific about selecting certain areas of that clip. Also, if I need to review what I just selected, I can drag my cursor over, tap the spacebar, and I'll get a preview of what's going on in that clip. Screenshots are real easy to drop into iMovie. However, I strongly suggest that you import any images into iPhoto first. What that does is it catalogs those photos so that they will not lose their links back into iMovie. You'll see that iMovie has cleared out the Dropbox and reorganized those movies that I had in there into its archive. Say I was to take this screenshot. Drop it into my iMovie. And then delete that screenshot mistakenly. When I go to preview my iMovie, what's going to happen is that new screenshot that I just dropped in there, it's going to have a broken link. And it really messes up entire projects when you break links. So here's the recommended process instead. I'm going to take a screenshot. Drag that to iPhoto. It'll start an import process. And then back in iMovie, I can easily find my recently added pictures in my last import. Now it's safe for me to drag this screenshot into the trash because I can confirm that it's in the iPhoto database. Once I'm happy with my timeline in iMovie, it's important to remember that simply dragging the project file into another space is not going to create a finalized movie. These are all segments of other movies, and what iMovie needs to do is take all of the different linked files, compress them, and drop them into another new file. There's a few different ways to do that. From the share menu, we can select YouTube, Facebook, Vimeo, but a number of these are blocked for students. However, if we export our movie, we can export it with certain settings that allow us to select the quality, such as HD720, HD1080, and then we can upload those files to Dropbox, Google Drive, or some other student accessible hosting service. You'll see that I have the options to decide where I want to save this finalized product. Oftentimes, I'll start with my desktop. Again, depending on how long your actual project is, depends on how long it takes to export your final product. Exporting final products in HD 720 or HD 1080 often take a longer amount of time in order to properly render. That's because of the size and sharpness of the resolution. Heading back to my desktop, I've now got my screencast.mov file. This is in addition to that other screen recording file that I had from before. The screencast.mov file is that final version. I can preview it by tapping on it once, hitting the spacebar, just to confirm that I got all of the content that I need. Choose for yourself how you'd like to share that finalized product. Thanks for listening to this screencast and let me know if you have any questions.